Welcome back to Yep Master and you are watching right now our botany class. The topic is Morphology of Flowering Plants. For the past few 5-6 classes we have studied about different parts of the plant and we are studying about the morphological characters. As what I have told you when we have started the route, at that time I told you that morphological characters can be vegetative or can be reproductive. So the vegetative part is over with leaf. Now we are shifting towards the reproductive parts or you can say the parts which are related to sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So whenever we are talking about sexual reproduction in flowering plants, it is obviously related to flowers. Now what are flowers actually or how they are formed? That is the most important thing. Before starting the next topic that is inflorescence, I would like to remind you that uh, there is daily practice paper for every of the topic taught in the class. You can go through them, you can do the practice so that you can become more efficient as well as accurate. Plus we have the exam on Sunday as well, the weekend exam which is based on the leaf. So for leaf you have got almost 20, 20 questions and then again a test of 45 questions. Okay, so when you are going to have these many questions for a short topic and that too in a quality manner, in that cases you are going to be more efficient and accurate in the theoretical part of this chapter or you can grasp it in a more better way. The more important thing is about the regularity. Attend the classes regularly, appear in the test regularly, you will definitely going to get your target whatever you have decided. So your determination is not going to lose that's why we are putting the test at regular interval as well okay it is necessary to be in focus for your target that's why appearance in a in a test is must okay let's now start with the next topic that we have to study with and that is inflorescence Although most of the time many people used to say that it would be better if we are going to study flower first. But as we are following the schedule of NCRT book, we are following the same sequences. There is no need right now to consider flower much prior to inflorescence. Okay. So here we begin with the morphology of flowering plant and the topic is inflorescence for today. So before starting the topic to be inflorescence, let's take certain examples from our surrounding itself. If you have ever seen China rose, okay, leave. Have you ever seen the rose flower? So that rose flower is appearing single, means one only flower at a place. Whereas in other examples like in banana, we are observing so many flowers in a bunch. Or the other example can be wheat, rice. These are bearing flowers in a bunch. So what are the differences between the two? Okay. Just like the stalk of leaf is called petiole, the stalk of flower is called pedicel. But when they are born on a common axis, now I am saying many flower on a common axis, that common axis is called as peduncle. Okay. So here is a brief description what we are going to study today here and what are the complex words that are given in the book. I am going to simplify it first so that you can understand it very well what is given in the NCRT book, right? So what is that particular common thing that we need to start with? So if anything is stem, remember. Why I am saying stem? Because flower is considered as modified shoot and that is performing sexual reproduction. So if it is shoot means if it is stem in that cases, remember stem, being stem, the structure which is present on the stem is bud. So a stem was told as vegetative structure in the previous classes. So it means the structure that are present on the stem or which are considered to be compact stem means what? This bud. If bud is considered to be a stem, in that cases bud is also to be but must be what? Vegetative means but also having the same vegetative role. But is also having vegetative role. So if bud is having vegetative role then we are saying it is going to bear either it is going to bear either thorn right it may get modified to form tendril or if not getting modified it remain as such in that cases I am saying it may bear what branch. 
so a bud may turn out into either thorn tendril or branch fine depends axillary bud apical bud okay the second thing is it may be possible the vegetative bud is going to modify clear modify into something else means what does it mean induced or i will say influenced or stimulated by under stimulation means someone is stimulating the structure clear under stimulation so when we are talking about under stimulation type of thing what character we can mention here so the under stimulation character can be stated or can be written as that in under stimulation the situation is going to form floral bud that's it means bear what flower the floral bud means flower right now this floral bud is going to grow into single flower or maybe into a floral axis again further i can say this the floral bud may grow into an axis as floral axis okay and on the other side about the floral bud i can say what the floral bud is going to be a single flower floral bud bear single flower very clearly mentioned either single flower or the floral axis now this floral axis is called as peduncle this floral axis is called peduncle okay we remember this one fine so we have a short description of the things in the brief we learned one thing we learned the thing that how the floral axis is formed or the floral bud is formed either the floral bud remains single or may it grow into an axis that is called as peduncle fine so here comes the description the lines from the book are like the flower or a flower is a modified shoot as i said how it become means how the shoot become modified to flower okay wherein the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem okay the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem means which is growing continuously the tip of floral meristem will be called as whose tip will be called as floral apical meristem clear so we are saying whose tip will be called as apex you can call it as apex here now the thing is what this apex is going to do clear what this apex is going to do it may be like the apex may continue to grow or maybe it is going to be a flower right it is about flower only not the pattern of flowers arising on the stem it is about a single flower right remember this so the apex produces different kinds of floral appendages which apex the tip of what the floral meristem bears the different kind of appendages laterally a successive node instead of leaves okay i can mention this thing what they want to tell this is the structure which they are saying the tip is called as what apex now on this structure they are saying that this structure is becoming little bit swollen means you can say the appearance is like a bud the appearance is nothing as other than bulb like appearance then i am saying the floral appendages okay fine the floral appendages the first floral appendage or you can say floral leaf sepal then we'll see the non green but colorful or you can say maybe white in color possible
see these structures are not coming from the same point right means this is called as petal we are calling them as petals okay now this petal is coming from some other place not from the place where the sepal is present if flower is a modified shoot if flower is a modified stem in that cases it must be having nodes internodes but fortunately here the no internodes are very much shortened or you can say the no nodes are not much separated from each other these nodes which are bearing the floral leaves are too much close and when they are close enough we are observing these type of things here are the things next is the other part that is called as stamen this is stamen and what is left is the pistil that will be the pistil part so here is the pistil then the receptive end calling called stigma okay so all parts are different i can call this one as pistil and here the next to it is or below this that i have made here is stamen right arising on different nodes or you can say from different nodes nodes which are not separated by long distances means they are nearby they are much nearby to each other fine so that kind of thing we used to say about the flower right so these things are very much clear although we are going to study that how the flower is going to appear on this floral axis or the peduncle remember this green stalk is called as this green stalk is called as pedicel see the difference please be clear the stalk of flower is called pedicel and here is a different word which is called as peduncle okay the stalk of flower pedicel the stalk of floral axis or you can say entire inflorescence is called peduncle clear the two words are obviously na not same be clear about this okay these two words are not same peduncle not same as pedicel okay peduncle pedicel are different things now do the question whatever you wish clear solve the question from wherever you wish but necessarily you must go for a daily practice paper as well so when you are going to appear for the daily practice paper definitely you are going to face the questions which will means you can say that they are having some confusing words or the some words which are almost very near to each other in the spelling but they have different meanings they have their different importance it is it may be those words may be examples those may be scientific terms those may be such terminology as well okay you may observe such of the terms which are used in different chapters and different de definition but the terminology is same so we need to be very careful about these things okay a minor mistake or minor error in reading is going to means we are going to lose our one question if you are going to read pedicel instead of peduncle so a flower which is not having pedicel is called as sessile a flower is not having pedicel is called as sessile okay peduncle is seen in inflorescence pedicel is for the stalk of flower peduncle is the stalk of inflorescence the common axis that bear flowers is called peduncle clear i repeat the common axis that bear or the floral axis that bear flowers is called peduncle right on which the flowers may be sessile or may be pedicellate may be sessile or may be pedicellate that why no <clears throat> the ne next condition in that case is on the stem the flower may be arising in different forms how or how they are arising let's discuss over here one after another how they are same how they are different the first of the case is about the solitary flower now what does it mean they are saying 
that if the shoot tip transforms into flower i repeat if shoot tip transforms into flower in that cases what will be the condition it will be considered as which type of flower solitary means single flower that will be considered as solitary flower that will be considered as solitary flower then shoot tip means in the cases of shoot tip we used to mention in the cases of shoot tip we have to mention other cases as well hold on will go one after another so solitary flower means when the flower is single when it arises singly it is called as solitary flower now in many of such examples we rarely observe to get the fruit or get the seeds okay we used to say that flowers are supposed to form seeds then only they are significant in sexual reproduction i'm not saying fruit because fruit may be maybe not having the seeds okay they may have the seeds maybe not so if they have the seed it means sexual reproduction occurred or fertilization was present then only the seeds are formed so if we have such kind of cases like uh, china rose or rose it is very hard to see seeds of rose it is very much difficult to identify or to see the fruit of china rose the chances are very less reason first of all the flowers are single they are one only the insect the wind or any other pollinating agent which is carrying the pollen grain means the bearer of the male gamete the insect doesn't know or air doesn't know that the next flower is rose or china rose it may be like the pollen grain of rose are getting dispersed on the china rose that doesn't means it is going to be a successful kind of pollination no it is not it's a kind of failure you can say pollen grain wasted so that's why it is necessary to understand the word solitary flower okay so solitary flower type of thing means single flower there are certain demerits in it that why the plant is not getting the abundant number of seeds in them or why they are frequently not forming the fruit or forming the seeds the reason is simple because they have only one and only one flower at one place maybe having so many on the plant okay but at one place they are bearing one only so the evolved form is to bear so many flowers at the same place and in that cases you can say the number of seed formation or you can simply can uh, describe about that the advantage can be stated as more number of seed formation by inflorescence so what is the advantage of forming inflorescence over solitary flower simple is the number of seed formation will be more in inflorescence okay the chances for pollination thereafter successful fertilization can be favored by more number of flowers arising from the same place may be possible if they are bisexual the pollen grain may get transferred into adjacent flower chance can be many if it is carried by wind maybe in the cases so many pollen grains are coming at least 5 10 15 20 of hundreds means you can say the 20% or 30% pollen may get trapped in such inflorescence which is having so many female flowers on it so this is how the inflorescence is more beneficial advantages over solitary flower right so here we are saying solitary flower when a shoot tip transforms into a flower so one thing i made as a concise point a short note a short line the shoot tip into flower means a shoot tip is turning into flower that type of condition is solitary flower right okay the second case they are saying the floral meristem grow as peduncle means the floral axis is made the floral axis is made although the floral axis can be in two different forms it is growing indefinitely or it is growing definitely means terminates into a flower oh similar lines what i have told you it is necessary to understand the common and the different words okay what is common between that word which is written as cymose and solitary flower what is common between these two the solitary 
and the cymos if you are going to com compare you will observe the tip is going to bear flower what is written here terminates into a flower here also tip is going to bear a flower so very clear what is written shoot tip into flower solitary and when when peduncle means floral axis or peduncle tip when the tip of peduncle is getting converted into flower then it will be named as cymose inflorescence so they may say and they may confuse by writing these words okay so be careful <coughs> be careful in choosing the options or getting through the lines read carefully that will be cymose inflorescence so when it is cymose it is cymose when they are saying the floral axis it is cymos when they are saying the floral axis is turning into a flower at tip the tip remember floral axis tip oh shoot the tip into flower when shoot tip solitary when the tip of floral axis cymos and fluorescence okay flower at the tip of shoot solitary of floral axis cymos and fluorescence be clear about this i have identified the common thing between them okay so it is very clear one this is how we need to identify the similar and the dissimilar among them if we have that capability means we can do it very easily okay that is the only difficult part because if the question is based on example easiest of easy means anyone is going to attempt that question that to correctly but when the theory is twisted like this in that cases we may have certain problems okay so you need to be you can say you need to do a mastery in such kind of questions wherever the theory is twisted the master is having an advantage they are framing the questions they can put such type of language in the paper and then making the question more difficult appear to more difficult but if you are doing the practice like this way means putting the similar dissimilar from separate uh, separate from each other or whenever you are doing the comparison finding out the common words in different definitions then definitely you are obviously you are getting this advantage you are better than the other students okay try to identify such things where the question can be put up okay so that is the classic line that we have studied that how the tip is transformed into flower if it is the tip of the shoot we will call it a solitary flower as in china rose type of example or if we are saying the tip of floral axis terminates into a flower that will be called a cymos inflorescence okay so that type of thing we have mentioned very clearly okay in all the cases remember this is the floral bud which get modified the floral bud i repeat the floral bud floral meristem single flower at the tip solitary the floral bud grows continuously bearing the peduncle into indefinite axis racemos into definite axis cymos simple so it's a easy one so here we say flower is single tip is bearing the flower here flowers are many but still peduncle tip is bearing the flower okay clear so this is the thing that we need to compare comparison is necessity okay we need to do it whenever there is a chance definitely so if you have such questions do them continue your practice with such kind of questions okay we are providing the dpps for that purpose but you need to be careful from your side as well you need to do much more practice of such kind of questions clear we are focused to make you much much efficient as well as accurate by making you habitual of doing practice you need to be focused to achieve your goal clear yeah, that's why we are saying at yap master that you need to be regular for your studies then only you can maintain the focus your dedication if you are appearing for 
the weekend exams that is on the Sunday and you are appearing for or you are attempting the daily practice paper as well. Right? And that is available obviously on Yup Master. So those who are watching us on the Yup Master YouTube live channel must subscribe, press the bell icon so that you will get the notification of our new videos, the updates regarding the NEED and the CBSE examinations plus Biology Olympiad and the other type of notifications whenever it is going to announce. The secondly that we need to know about the Yup Master app if you haven't downloaded it yet and if you are watching us only on the YouTube live the thing which is most necessary is if you are going to download the Yup Master app you will get the daily practice paper you will get the weekend exam you will get the practice questions as well you can go through across the streams across the subjects whichever you want to learn whichever you want to study you can join them you can watch the previous classes as well you can watch the catch up videos if you have missed your classes okay so hope you are going to enjoy the study with yup master here we are studying the race mos inflorescence for the first so as i told you that race mos inflorescence type of thing is indefinitely growing floral axis indefinitely growing floral axis the one line is written and i am saying this this is the stem here and in this stem when we have this kind of character the node is bearing the node is bearing the structure this is the node and now it comes the leaves so this is one of the leaf not much likely to be described we are studying about inflorescence not about the leaf right now okay the axillary bud i am saying here which is getting elongated 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 into floral axis okay fine so this is the structure which i am saying growing as peduncle the floral axis okay and now see the character now this floral axis is bearing these stalk okay and here is some leafy appendage which may be bracket may be present may be not be present depend on the examples okay and then we are saying that these are flowers so if these are flowers so this is flower this is flower this is flower this one this one also okay right it's obvious why we are not going for the diagram or the photo that is given in ncert wait for it it will come not here okay because in ncert there is hardly a paragraph about inflorescence we are going to study a little bit in detail okay we are going to study a little bit in detail why for because such of the things are going to be or you can say are related to other chapters that's why we need to study it here clear we are going to study in little bit more elaborate manner <laughs> so see this these are the flowers which are present and now please differentiate the two words again what peduncle and pedicel don't be confused as i told you very clearly that the stalk of flower is called as pedicel and the common axis or you can say here the floral axis on which these flowers are arising called as peduncle right is it clear to you okay so this is what we are observing so other things that would i would like to add now see these things carefully i am saying the flower is towards the base and having comparatively longer floral stalk that is not the criteria i am considering it to be the first flower then the next one is this second number then is the next one third and here is the next which is fourth okay and then there is a last which is fifth and the tip is free it is continuously growing so when i am saying the oldest it has base and the youngest is towards the apex okay again see in a diagram if we are if we were seeing it from the side this is the time to see it from the top means from the this side 
Okay, I am observing it from here. Now I made so many circles around it. Why? Because flowers are are arising in a spiral manner, maybe. And then I have observed that the youngest flower is very close to this central axis, whereas the oldest flower is too much far away from this central axis. So younger is coming towards the apex, oldest is towards the periphery. This arrangement is only called as acropetal. Nice. The branches on the shoot, acropetal. Leaves on the shoot and branches, acropetal. The branches of the root, acropetal. And the flowers arising in racemos inflorescence, acropetal. Clear? From the root up till inflorescence, we have clubbed all the things together. Right? This can be another question. Okay, this is how the things are related from one chapter to the other. Right now we are within the unit. It is possible that they may club different units as well. Okay, so here is the thing that we are talking about. And, I, and as I said, that consider this thing, this, thing, this is the thing. As what? Central axis or consider it like this. Okay, fine. Then I am saying make circles around it. Okay, going to make. So, these dots are representing the circle. So, so, the first circle is complete. Okay. This is the first circle I am saying. Here is the first flower. Okay. Then circle number 2. First flower means I am saying the youngest. Number 5. Clear? The number 5 is closest to the central axis. Then comes the next one. Then comes again. So I am not going to make all the five circles. Just a representation only. Okay. I must mention the number so that it will be easier for you to identify. This is number five. This is number four. This is number three. Clear? It will be like this. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. The oldest is towards periphery. Youngest is towards the excess. Okay, so that is the condition which we use to call this acropetal. So, peduncle grows indefinitely. Why so? Grows indefinitely. The reason behind this is, the reason behind this is that excess does not terminate into a flower. Because excess is not terminating into a flower. So, that's why we used to consider it to be growing indefinitely. Okay, it is growing indefinitely. Next number is, the other thing that we can mention is other, third feature. The third feature is the flower are born in acropetal manner. <coughs> Just now we have discussed this. What? That acropetal manner is what? Acropetal manner can be stated as centripetal as well. This is what you can write it like this. If fifth is considered to be youngest, fourth is called younger. Third is young. Then number two is old. And one is much older. Getting my point? So here I am saying the acropetal means the succession is younger towards the apex. Or another word is centripetal which I told you in the form of circles. What, me, what means is the older flower is towards periphery. The older is towards the periphery and the younger is towards the apex. That arrangement is centripetal. You must have heard about this word in physics as well. So see the diagrammatic representation of racemose flower. All the things I have tried to mention which were written in the points. Okay. So that is about racemose inflorescence. The second about racemose inflorescence we can say it can be divided into further subtypes. Means the race moss is having different types as well. Depending on what type of flowers are arising. Okay. And how they are arising. That type of things. Simple. So race moss and fluorescence. Where the main axis means the peduncle remain elongated. Means it is continuously growing. And is much more longer as compared to the other type of examples. So when it remain elongated type of structure. The name is called racim and the racim is appearing in the way like this. 
the racem is like this we are saying this is peduncle i repeat this is peduncle and the peduncle is bearing flowers like this okay and here is the same way just like the earlier as i told you the leafy appendages may be present okay so that type of characters we can have so here is the condition that i am telling you that here are the flowers then so the tip is free so previously that i have made in the earlier one the previous page is the same of this type okay i repeat that this structure is pedicel and this structure is peduncle don't get confused about the two word the pedicel is bearing sorry the peduncle is bearing pedicellate flower means stalked flowers clear the simple raceme or only raceme means unbranched pedicellate bisexual flower as we seen raphenus common name radish yeah radish also bear flower the thing is we are not going to wait for the flowers to appear we are going to dig it out when it is forming the condensed root okay say for example in the winter season if you are not going to dig out the raphenus or you can say radish then definitely in the coming season you are going to observe its flower okay so here is the thing that i told you that raceme means a simple type of inflorescence in which the pedicellate bisexual flowers are arising on continuously growing or indefinitely growing peduncle that's it that much easy okay other thing the next character or next type of example that we need to study is the branched raceme means the same structure is going to be branched now the same structure is going to be branched how how we can say that it is going to be branched so here it comes where main axis means the panicle or the raceme is get, getting branch we are calling it as compound raceme okay just for an example i am going to make it so that you can understand it very well or you can know this thing that why the definitions are different or why we need to mention with a different word for them so this is the pedis <coughs> peduncle this peduncle is having branches these are branches this time i am going to be a, going to make the structures in different color right so these are related to peduncle and its branches the pedicel the pedicel okay okay fine so these are pedicel okay that kind of character fine this kind of character here below are the leafy appendages so here i am saying that these peduncle are going to then sorry pedicel are now going to bear what flowers on them so these are flowers getting my point means each branch is raceme that's why it is called as compound raceme each branch is bearing raceme inflorescence the peduncle get branched and the each branch is bearing the raceme that kind of character we can mention here okay this is the thing that we need to know the examples are seen in some common ornamental plants i made this yellow intentionally this is the one which is in our ncrt that photo okay that belongs to this plant kasia kasia amaltas is the common name in the common vernacular name in hindi we call it as amaltas and the other is gulmohar dalonex 
they have this type of inflorescence. What are we are observing? These are branch means compound resume means these are branches of peduncle or the floral axis and each branch is bearing each branch bears racem inflorescence each branch is bearing racem inflorescence that type of character we can call as panicle okay that simple this is the thing that we need to know about the panicle inflorescence okay next is almost as racem but the flowers are not having their pedicel means they are sessile remember this thing i am going to mention the words i am saying the flowers are of two kinds flowers with stalk flower which are stalkless flowers with stalk are called pedicellate flower which are stalkless are called sessile okay the stalk are pedicellate stalkless are sessile those are the words okay moving on with that character only that we have learned right now sessile okay so a racem where sessile flowers are born unbranched sessile bisexual flower the spike is the peduncle which is unbranched fine mean it is almost as racem almost as racem the peduncle clear the leafy appendages are first okay and then comes the flower means without the stalk there is no pedicel okay just simple one okay sessile flowers means they don't have pedicel a racem of sessile flower is spike that's it this is the easiest simple one okay next going the other one where main axis is elongated next is what we can mention about the next is here the next is the spike or spikelet just like the racem got branched the same way spike may be branched okay if the spike is branched peduncle branches of the peduncle why to make the diagram once you are going to make it you will keep it in the mind that what is the definition we need not to write the definition in that cases okay the leafy appendages this way then we have the spectrums like as i told you the flowers are sessile why hey, this is spike na after all it is a kind of spike so flowers are sessile there is a simple one so here we are having such kind of structure which can be considered spike or spikelet a compound spike where each branch is bearing spike in fluorescence as we seen amaranthus right now famous as kiona you can get these seeds in the market right now they are getting famous because of you can say a kind of novel food okay 
means high nutri nutrient value food. That's why it is becoming famous nowadays. So spike or spikelet is here. It is usually seen in monocots. Okay. Next. Catkin is the structure which is comparatively a different one and different in the cases or in the regards that I am saying here. Stem. Okay. Thereafter we say on the stem the next character that we need to know. As usual the leaf and here coming the peduncle but this time the pedicle is comparatively what you can say it can wave means pendulous clear the peduncle <coughs> the peduncle is longer and pendulous because of so many flowers on it it is again becoming bulky okay so but remember that they will be unisexual these are the examples for what unisexual flowers only previously we have studied that those are bisexual flowers now we are talking about that this structure is of unisexual flowers so so many flowers i am making okay it seems that they all are coming from the same place it's not necessary so it's something like unisexual flowers in a racem where the floral axis becomes pendulous okay the pendulous sessile unisexual flower or you can say a spike of unisexual flowers that's it where the floral axis is pendulous so there are so many number which are not distinct okay so this structure is seen in morus alba Common name mulberry. Common name is mulberry. Now Morus alba is famous not only as in the name of catkin. It is famous mulberry. Now the parts of mulberry plant which are used. So the parts of mulberry plant which are used. One the leaf is used. Number two the wood is used. Number three the inflorescence is used. Now, what are the uses that we need to know here? Okay, we are reading it just for general knowledge. You can say like this. Yeah, really, it is about the general knowledge type of thing. Nothing else. So, why the leaf? Leaf is for rearing silk worm. Wood making hockey sticks. Inflorescence becomes fleshy and dead to edible as fruit. Oh, the fruit of mulberry. Yeah, it's sold in the market obviously, but the numbers are comparatively lesser because fruit is small in size. That fruit which is this much small in size is actually the inflorescence of catkin or the mulberry plant. Okay. So that's why it means we have studied just because of the name of the example only. We give the importance of catkin because of this name, mulberry. Why for? Unisexual also. Why? Because there is separate chapter that will be in the later classes, reproduction in flowering plants. In there, those chapters, we are going to have examples which are mentioning monoecious and dioecious plants. What are they? We will study later on, but one of the example of dioecious is mulberry. We will come on in later chapters, we will see it there. No need to elaborate these things in this particular place. Leave it. So, catkin is the inflorescence which become fleshy in mulberry and is consumed as fruit by us or you can say by animals. So, this is another example where the main axis remain elongated. Okay. Now, the next situation is where the main axis become fleshy or you can say thick that is called as spadix. The thick or fleshy type of thing. This is the condition which I am saying about the peduncle. 
means the floral axis and this is bearing the flowers this is bearing so many flowers on it obviously the pattern remain racemos pattern remain the racemos remember this means the upper flowers are younger one because they are numerous that's why i am making in a random manner okay so many flowers are there but they are actually covered they are actually covered by what they are covered by colorful bract means those leafy appendages that i was making in the previous ones the small leaf like green structure here they are comparatively larger in sizes they are larger in size and attractively colored this type of character okay this type of character we used to mention so that's why we have these features in that case we can write it as here we can write what that this colorful structure is called as peth and where i can observe this i can observe this in monocot plants only i'm not saying all monocots in monocots if it is there then okay you can see it in the corn also the green color covering around that cob which you used to have in the this coming rainy season okay although unfortunately we people are at home we are not enjoying the rain by this way so you could have seen this thing if you have seen the maize plant you may see these these structures are greenish in them but if you have seen the banana plant you may see the purple or violet type of covering around the inflorescence or the bunch of flower that colorful structure is spathe or you can call it spathe whichever you wish okay here it is not about the diction here it is about the fundamentals so the thick fleshy axis covered by a large colored bract is seen in banana not only in banana you can see it in female inflorescence of maize also there also you can see it okay this is fleshy floral axis these are many flowers on it and which are in turn getting converted or getting covered by colorful bract this is modified bract now this is colorful to attract what insects for what pollination okay so that seeds can be formed unfortunately banana is still not forming the seed but maize is going to form that's why i have taken the example of maize here separately okay banana is not forming the seed the reason is different okay it is not related to spit here fine so the spadix type of inflorescence you will observe in monocots means never in dicots characteristic in monocots right okay not all monocots have this if spathe or spadix is there the plant must be monocot spadix can also be compound means branch and each is bearing the spadix in fluorescence such character is seen in coconut or the date palm clear so such character can be seen in coconut or date palm the flowers in the spadix in fluorescence may be unisexual or bisexual any here this is a discussion for the later topic not for here so this is spadix now another thing comes and that is the main axis is going to be short or you can say remain short means it even if it is growing it is growing with a less space so the flowers are supposed to come from almost as a similar point maybe like this okay or they may be appearing in a condensed manner too much close to each other okay so here we say the first of the example where main axis is short is named as corymb now what corymb is 
corim is something which we are observing here as the peduncle okay which is bearing the pedicel here it is pedicellate flowers okay see what is happening the lower flowers are having longer floral stalks means longer pedicel the flowers which are coming near the apex have short pedicel okay means they are trying to reach almost to the same level they are trying to reach almost to the same level okay if they are trying to reach almost to the same level this is what we have which is called as corem okay so i am saying that this is what this one is what i am saying this is longer pedicel in lower flowers or you can say older flowers and these are comparatively short pedicel in flowers which are arising in upper level so that all of them can come to same levels they all can reach up to the same height that is the condition over here racemes with short peduncle peduncle is short the lower flowers with longer pedicel so that all the flowers come to the same level such is seen in candy tuft scientific name is iberis vernacular name is chandni you can see on the many of the ayurvedic medicine preparations that iberis is one of the common thing in them the flower the leaf the stem the root all of these are medicinal are medicinally important in candy tuft okay the next character is coming for compound corem now what compound corem is the compound corem when corem is getting branched it will be compound corem yeah, this is simple and is seen in cauliflower now can't you make the cauliflower it is the simple one na cauliflower is simple how to make a cauliflower it is just like what peduncle okay the branch of the peduncle then again each branch is having the same condition on it this is how the cauliflower is yeah true ha huh. unfortunately the flowers are not well developed flowers are not well developed don't make anything on the main structure right they will become more and more condensed in cauliflower remain undeveloped flowers remain undeveloped another example of what another example or you can say example number 2 where inflorescence becomes edible where inflorescence becomes edible okay edible inflorescence fine so this is the thing that we need to know is a simple one there is no not much any means we can say there is no much difficulty in memorizing their definitions is a too much easy that's why i was saying we are going to study a little bit in more elaborate way the reason is simple why because we need to know about these things this is general knowledge what we are eating in cauliflower just like in cabbage we have seen that was a largest bud we were eating the bud okay in onion the edible part was leaves in potato it was the underground stem the same way in cauliflower we are stead, we are going to eat what inflorescence you know cloves or long that is what the edible part is the unopened buds their buds are consumed okay so so many things are there you can't say that these things are irrelevant or not given in the books no they are indirectly somewhere else we need to know about them it is more about the general knowledge okay now mustard is one of the common example which is mentioned everywhere and that is here corymbos racem now the corymbos racem is a special case where we are saying the branches are having corymb inflorescence 
but the unfortunate thing is that lower flowers are not having that much long pedicel that can reach the top level that is corymbos the special name remember corymb is getting restricted or you can say the lower pedicels are getting restricted to reach the height that is what we used to study about mustard plant mustard is no doubt the important one okay else what else we have left with the other one umbel umbel is this one the flowers with the same same length of their pedicel are appearing to come from the same point appearing as an umbrella that is seen in centella commonly as brahmi pedicels nearly of equal length whereas if umbel become branched if umbel is getting branched it is called as compound umbel when compound umbel is considered it is seen in coriander coriander scientific name coriandrum and the other is jacus carota means carrot so it will be the branch of the umbel only nothing else so this is what today the racemose inflorescence is now over we are going to study the second type cymos and the third type even that is called a special kind of inflorescence okay go for the dpp have the practice get more efficient and accurate your preparation so that your focus remain as such to achieve your target thank you for watching those who are watching on us youtube live must subscribe the channel press the bell icon so that they will get the notification of the further live classes and the upcoming videos with the schedules and the other knowledgeful material on our channel and if you haven't downloaded the yup master app download it so that you can have the daily practice paper for each of the subject taught in the class whether physics chemistry botany or zoology you will get the practice question of it later on the weekend exam on every sunday so that you can make yourself more skillful thank you for watching us all the best